we cool? Yeah, I think we're good. We should have shaved. I think this is all good, bro. <laughs> hey guys, I am here today with Josh from Exploring with Josh. A lot of you would have seen him in my vlogs. But we decided sitting down and telling you guys some stories would be a cool way to do a collaboration because although we've filmed a lot of our adventures, we also have some pretty amazing stories. So on my channel today, we're doing good adventure stories. And then on Josh's channel, we're going to record bad adventure <laughs> stories. We all have them. And everyone who travels, something always unplanned is going to happen. It's going to be pretty bad. So we have each prepared a few stories that spring to mind about great things that have happened. And maybe some of those you haven't heard before. Maybe we haven't been able to vlog them. Or like some of my stories are from before I started YouTube. Cool, let's do this. So those of you that have seen my draw my life, there's this one part where I talk about a trip to Australia I did, and I had zero money at the time. A lot of you talk about how can I travel with no money, and I literally traveled with no money. I booked a one-way ticket to Australia from New Zealand, where I was at the time, and didn't have any plans, didn't know anyone there. I ended up living on the street in Sydney, so I was like <laughs> homeless. I found this big hedge, it was near the botanical gardens, and I kind of crawled in and hollowed out a little area, found some cardboard, lay it down the floor. I had a sleeping bag with me and I made this little den in the hedge. I then hitchhiked all the way up the east coast, like two and a half thousand miles up the east coast of Australia. And on that journey, I really found myself, like it sounds crazy, but some days I wouldn't talk to anyone. Um, some days I wouldn't get picked up and other days I'd like get picked up by a trucker who's doing like a 10 hour drive and like have these amazing conversations. And the whole way I was like, I don't want to like just take charity from people, but also I have no money. And I was, I was honest with people. I was like, look, I've chosen to come here. I'm just traveling. People were super generous. Like the, the, one of the truckers like bought me dinner and let me use a shower and he, you know. Man, if only YouTube was like there back then. That would have been the craziest thing to film. Yeah, so I, I had a couple of weeks of these cra crazy adventures and maybe I'll go more in depth with story time on those adventures at some point. Met amazing people, things that in reality, I wouldn't experience now because often I have the comfort of knowing where I'm going to be staying and it's a bit more planned out. But this was like winging it every day. Anyway, the point of the story is I got back down to Sydney like three weeks later. And again, I had no money. I hadn't been eating well for two weeks. I'd just been like, literally, I was finding food on the floor and stuff. I was like full no on homeless. No way, dude. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I got back down to Sydney and it happened to be that my friend's parents were in town and he was like oh you should hang out with my parents they're in town for the night so anyway they invited me out for dinner and it was like hadn't had a proper sit like i hadn't eaten at a restaurant in australia for how long oh just for, for like three weeks yeah i hadn't oh, been eating i've just been eating scraps and anyway so we got to this restaurant i ordered like everything i could and it was like super generous of them obviously i wasn't trying to take advantage but i was also like this is so good yeah. and then they said where are you staying tonight and i was like oh well you know there's this place I've been staying around the corner. <laughs> I was kind of embarrassed. I was like, there's a hedge, you know, there's a hedge. So I just put my sleeping bag in. Oh, and then at the end of the dinner, they were like, we've decided we want to book you a night at the Four Seasons Hotel. And it was like five star, jacuzzi, everything. And I went up to the hot tub on the, on the top <laughs> deck, looked over the balcony and I could see the hedge that I'd been sleeping in a few weeks before. <laughs> and it was just like sudden like reality check. Like, wow, like life sometimes it's tricky and hard and it's like, you know, you have to make your way. And then other times you get totally blessed by people or you find yourself in a situation where everything's just incredible. Question though, how did you get home? Um, oh, so at the time, this is another bit of advice guys, if you're traveling and you haven't got much money, try and find a way of earning money remotely. So at the time I was designing websites. So I wasn't earning a lot of money, but I, was earn, I earned enough. I have, <laughs> this whole time I was homeless, I had my laptop with me. So every day I'd go to like a shopping center, I'd plug in, charge a laptop, and then, so I designed a website whilst I was homeless in Australia and managed to get paid for that website by the end of the trip to book a flight home. So, <laughs> there you go. That's like the awesome story. Yeah. We've been hanging out a lot, but like he, the stories that he's saying, I've never heard yet. So like, this is like, wow. Like, I don't think you guys have heard this either. <laughs> yeah. All right, so here's, here's one of my stories. So I go to a lot of crazy abandoned places, but there was this one time that it's been on my list. I have a bucket list of places I really want to go. We probably all do, everyone who travels. But this place in particular was an abandoned theme park called Nara Dreamland. And in this theme park was this roller coaster that was obviously it's abandoned and it's all rusted and old. And there's a shot I wanted to get there my whole life. Since I was like 16, I was like, I want to go to Japan. It's not going to happen before I even did YouTube. And you've seen like, photos on the internet. All over. Yeah. I'm like, this would be a dream to take this picture in this abandoned theme park that's called Dreamland. 
And so I'm like, one day, maybe it's gonna happen. I don't know how I'm gonna get the money. I don't even think I'm gonna be able to travel. I wasn't that confident. And then, anyways, so I, I fly to Japan, and this is like six years later, and it just happens to be the theme park is still abandoned. I'm like, okay, this Was is- Was this before or after we met in Japan? Oh, this is a week after we met. Yeah. And that's another story I'm telling you guys, how I met this guy. But first, I'm telling this story. Okay. So, so then, I'm, I'm inside this, this abandoned theme park. It's four in the morning, no one's around. And I'm, I'm searching for where I can get this shot. Like, I have to find the roller coaster. And long story short, I, I find the roller coaster, and there was a stool. And people actually put the stool there just so they can stand up to get that shot. And the, the grass is all long, but because people just just go there all the time and walk through it, the path was just clearly there. It was like it was meant for me by myself Amazing. to just walk up to so there. So just like led you to the just spot. Just led me to the spot with a <laughs> chair to sit on this, just sit right on the chair, take the shot. And I just, for some reason, it was like... I accomplished life. Like my whole life I just wanted to see this place and I and I did it. And I just felt like I felt like the man, you yeah, know? Like I felt so good to do that. And at that moment I feel like I could like I could do anything after that. It's like it's like everything that could be a dream, I can just make reality. It's like I did it. Like I went from the United States to Japan and the big thing was to see that abandoned theme park and I did it. Yeah, man. And, and have you got the photos? Dude, I got I've the got video. It. I got the okay. video. Here's here's the photo. We'll link the video below, but here's a photo and this is this represents Josh achieving his dream. Yeah. <laughs> For us. <laughs> New story. This isn't so much travel related, but it's a cool story that happened when I was living in one location for a while. Again, this was back in like 2002. I had a, it was the first time I'd had, had any money. It wasn't a lot of money, but it was enough money to rent a house with some friends. And I was in London. I can't even remember what I was doing in London, but I was walking around. I went to pull some cash out of an ATM and there was a homeless guy sitting on the floor and he started talking to me. And I had this urge just to like talk with him because often I'm like rushing and busy, but I wasn't rushing that day. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll sit down and chat with him. I looked down at my watch and we'd been talking for two hours. What? Yeah, two hours just sitting there chatting about his life and these problems he'd been in. And then I was just about to say to him, like, sorry, there's nothing more I can do to help you. And as I went to say, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do to help you. I actually said, do you want to come and live with me? And he was stopped and he was a bit taken back as well. He was like, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> for about two years, we hung out with this guy and like helped him, helped him get a job and like just so, help nurture him. I'm not saying it wasn't difficult. There's definitely problems and that's a whole nother story. But overall, I think it challenged me to think actually I can make more of a difference to this guy. And I think he, he impacted my life as much as we impacted his. I don't think we like came in and like saved everything. So he never stole or nothing from you that whole time? There was... <laughs> <laughs> there were some issues, right? But what I'm saying is overall it's really positive and I think some of the problems is people have never had a, a, a relationship of trust yeah. with other people so they don't know how to behave and they need to learn how to how to trust other people. So I feel like it's it's a big thing to do to, to welcome someone, to support them in your life that's had a really tough time, like whether they're homeless or a drug addict or whatever. But I, I felt like for me at the time it, it helped me realise that like... I don't want to just be comfortable. I don't want to just build my own yeah, like, you want to life. Help everyone. Yeah, I, I, I see the world as more than just me, me succeeding. You yeah. Know? In the same way as like, any friendship group you have. Yeah, you want to help and, them and yeah, yourself. Yeah, like you grow. want you want to support everyone. You don't want to just support. You don't want to just succeed yourself. You know. So. That's the mindset that's going to make you successful. By the way, mm. it is. And to be honest, I sometimes feel like I could learn things from my past self. Like if I met myself 10 years ago, maybe sure. I'd actually be able to learn a bit more about generosity and selfless living. Cause I feel like being swept up into this mm -hmm. whole like YouTube success and the amount of traveling we're doing and nice places we're staying and, and fun, activity, it, fun activities yeah. we're doing, you kind of, sometimes you I get know. too you sucked get, into that. You do, it it's, uh, could be a little dangerous at mm. times too actually. I, I understand though. I, I think that. it's making sure that some of the trips we're doing as well has like, some social good aspect where we can do, you know, promote positive things, support other people, support, Stay humble. support good causes. Yeah, it's not all about like how much fun we can have, but it's about um, supporting other people around the world and 
issues around the world that are happening. So. Dude, that story makes me want to do more right now. Yeah, that's, like, yeah, that's inspiring, dude, for real. <laughs> okay, so my next story. This is my first time ever leaving the country. I went to Thailand. Mm -hmm. And to get the money for Thailand, this is actually what happened. So this is when I was starting to do YouTube. I was posting up a few abandoned videos. I had no money either. But during the winter time, my car got hit by someone. And instead of fixing it with the was money- Was it parked up and someone it, just It was it. parked and yeah, someone yeah, yeah. hit it. It was just happened to be that I, I was trying to go on a trip, but I had no money. Yeah, and yeah. then my car got hit. And I was like, oh, I don't really care about my car and it's getting hit. I wonder how much money I'm going to get from it. Mm. Happened to be I got like $2,000. Amazing. And, and, and then I just met this guy named Cody, which is in my uh, other crew. And he's like, let's go to Thailand. I said, dude, I got the money for it. My car got hit. So like, we ended up going to Thailand. And in one part of my day, I ended up losing my tripod. And... But I was filming, and on the side of me, when I was like, oh man, I can't, I can't get this shot, I was trying to do a low, low exposure shot. Yeah. There was a guy that doing a low exposure shot with a tripod. He, was a, he seemed like a cool guy. Mm. I said, hey, can I borrow your tripod for a minute? And he said, oh yeah, what do you need for? Well, I'm trying to get this cool picture. I also am making YouTube videos. He says, no way, I make YouTube videos. His name's Paul, by the way. So, so I just asked for his tripod, and we kept talking as I'm, I'm getting the shot. And then we just connected, and we became good friends. And for the next week, because I lost my tripod and asked for his tripod, he stayed with us, and we just did wow. this whole crazy adventure with him. And it gets better, because after that, uh, we kept in contact. A year later, I actually went to G uh, Germany to visit him. Yeah. And he took me all around Germany, and then I went to Chernobyl. But the, the point is, like, anything could happen. Like, anything could happen when you travel. Everything unplanned, or if you think you planned it all, something's gonna happen and you're gonna meet someone, and then the whole plans are gonna change because you're gonna end up doing mm. something that's better or with someone else. I think one of the best things about travel is the people that you meet. And there's a lesson, guys. Things can seem bad, like something negative might happen, but because of that, it might trigger a series of events which ends up really positive. So, yeah, look yeah. for those opportunities. When something bad happens, think, think like, okay, this, this could end up good. Yeah, you what's gonna happen yeah. next? So, if you haven't seen Josh's channel, it's funny you were saying you started by watching my videos and were inspired. He's actually now overtaken me in subscribers. <laughs> He's about to hit two oh, million man. subscribers. His channel is blowing up. The big thing about your channel, if you guys haven't seen his channel, is he explores abandoned stuff that he's like the abandoned king on YouTube. Uh, very, very interesting places. You're gonna have to take me to some. Yeah, so, we will, we will. We have uh, a lot to do. So <laughs> we, so go to his channel now. If you haven't already subscribed, also check out the video that we're filming for his channel, which is Bad Adventure Stories. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys later on. Peace out. Yeah. Enjoy life and live the adventure. Boom, boom. <laughs>